Mandate. What's up, family? Welcome to another episode of Mandate. My name is Charles, and I am co-hosting alongside Betia Wilson, a.k.a. Mad Messenger, and this platform is about open talanoa around certain issues pertaining to our people, and in particular to our men, but also celebrating our successes as well. And as a show, we like to explore ways where we can refine who we are as people, unlock our true potential, and take charge of our lives so we can be the best versions of ourselves. So, so warm Pacific greetings to everyone. And I'm just going to hand it over to Mad Messenger as he introduces our amazing guest tonight. Awesome, guys. And once again, we're in for Road Treat again. We have a very amazing man, uh, but also very humble as well. Um, and so uh, he is of Samoan descent. Uh, Samoan, uh, his dad is from the village of Nuotunu'u. His mum is from Palauli in Vailoa. He was born in, uh, in Tokoroa. Uh, he's 43 years old. He is the son of Makusua and Tisi Mialamu. Uh, he's the husband to his lovely wife, Nora, and he has eight children. Um, T, who was 23, Kalita, who was 21, Titan, who was 20, uh, Christina, uh, rest in love, um, deceased at the age of six in 2009. Um, and also Phoenix, who was 14, Portia, who was 10, Julia, who was nine, and TV Money, who was seven. He's also the, uh, the, he's also the grandfather to Zara, who was seven weeks old. Congratulations also. Uh, and also he is self-employed. Uh, the company is called Mealamu Security. Uh, but he's also blessed, he says he's also blessed to, to sit on various boards in his community. He is the chairman for Torohata Trust. Um, he also had a preschool, um, Akaiti Mangarungaro. Uh, he is the chairman of Kapitoi Rugby. He is also the a trustee in the Tamaki Makoto Pacific Wardens Trust. Um, he's also the chairman of the Christina Mialamu Trust. And so, Marorosui uh, Fumo Malangi Mama, Kirikoto Katoa, No Mai, Haere Mai. Welcome to the show, Mr. Luke Mialamu. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Pete and Charles, for having me on today. Again, I was um, pretty nervous all afternoon, <laughs> but um, yeah, willing to um, share and hopefully inspire our our men of our community. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's awesome, brother. Well, it's a privilege to finally meet you. Always see you in the community and doing amazing stuff. And I've seen you in some billboards um, sometimes. So it's cool just to finally connect. Um, but just before we get started also, and before we sort of ask you, how's your lockdown been? I'm just going to go through some rapid Fire questions. Is that all good? Far away. Sweet. So, well, let me look for my questions. <laughs> I've got to put away these other ones because you didn't want them. I think we'll holler at a green name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, also, um, rugby or league? I love playing league, but rugby is probably taking me further in life. <laughs> but it has to be relatively rugby. In terms of rugby, provincial, um, Auckland or counties, Manukau? Ooh. Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Auckland. Ooh. Um, state of origin, Queensland or New South Wales? Queensland to the bone. Eee. Okay, now you we can. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. You can, you can stay on the show now. Um, <laughs> what What is your favorite drink? Water at this stage. Awesome. When are you most productive? At night. Hey. I don't want to ask why, but I just saw that, <laughs> that grin on your face. You got eight children. Yeah. That's who, <laughs> who is your inspiration and why? Probably my dad. Um, my dad came to New Zealand on a, a borrowed suit, 47 years ago. And has taught us a lot of things around property. Um, so it's probably that 
I just seen my dad just before I came here to <laughs> came oh, to my office. So. Oh, mean, that's awesome. Um, summer or winter? Summer. What's something? What's what's something new that's happening in your in your life right now? Uh, probably real estate. I just bought a house, another house. <laughs> What's your favorite number and why? If you have one. Sorry? What's your favorite number and why? Six. That's my birthday. That was my favorite position in rugby. Nice. <laughs> How do you start your day? With a black coffee and a cigarette. Yeah. Um, and which subject were you worst at school? English. What was your What was your best? Mess. Hey. Um. What advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Slow down. <laughs> nice. Uh, what scares you? Probably leaving this earth before I finish my going to, uh, probably leaving to fight God's fight before my time that I've done, achieved my ultimate goals. Cool. Man. Um, when the borders open, which country are you hitting first? Probably the, the Gold Coast. Hey. Um, what's something you do not like doing? Making my bed. <laughs> awesome. What's something you enjoy doing? Family. A joint time of my... Uh, my Children, my wife, my extended family, or oh, you know, family drives me. Um, awesome. Yeah, I enjoy picking up my, taking my kids to school every day and dropping, picking them up, dropping them off, and just being involved with our children. Cool. That's cool. Um, what's your fit? Or what's your hobby? I like cars. I. Uh, I love Jordans. Nice. Um, yeah, probably hobbies, probably Jordans. Collecting them. <laughs> nice. Got to wear the heat, gentlemen. Got to wear the heat to the... Oh, to the, um... <laughs> oh. nice. Nice. Okay, this is, this is a personal question. Tell me the nickname among your day ones. Oh, my mum always calls me Luki. Luki? Uki? Yeah. yeah, it's probably Uki is from my mum. What's the nickname that your wife gives you? Um, the Rock, nah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was going to be honest. Um, she calls me Babe. Nice. Uh, what's your favourite childhood memory? Um, watching uh, WrestleMania 1, Dad woke us up in the middle of the night. Mm. And we never, ever seen um, wrestling before. And he, uh, oh, yes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love your work. And he, um, he showed us, um, I think it was WrestleMania 1. Yeah, that's cool. Um, biggest pet peeve. Oh, did I already say that? Yeah, biggest pet peeve. Biggest pet peeve. Biggest. What's what's that? Oh, it's something that like annoys you. Oh. Weeds around the house. <laughs> My wife says when you start on one, you just go through the whole house. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I guess I learned that from our dad because our yeah. dad's lawn is dad's lawn's like that and the stays like that all year round <laughs> oh, man 
That's cool. Um, we're nearly, nearly done, Us Just fill in the blank. Vulnerability is... I don't know how to explain it. Um, Charles, I wouldn't know how to explain one. Oh. We can unpack it later on. Yeah. <laughs> like, can we cool. <laughs> cool. We can we can unpack it. Um, men need to eat. <laughs> Wives need to be spoiled. A great answer. Um, something that people often get wrong about you. That he can't speak. That he can't talk. <laughs> well, just I'll probably answer that in that first question. <laughs> <laughs> and um what are you deeply grateful for right this minute? Life. Nice. Shout also. You made it through our rapid fire questions also. Well done. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Tell us, sorry I wasn't rapid. <laughs> ah, it's all, all good. good. All good. It's all good. It's all good. Sorry, sorry, Luke, because usually we always ask like, the guests. Uh, straight off the bat, um, about obviously with with lockdown and so forth, but how how have you been in this time round? I know, I don't know how many lockdowns. Were, I think this is our fifth one in Auckland. But how yes. have you been this time round in terms not not physically but more so mentally? How, yeah, how 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 have you been coping with this this um, lockdown? I think I um am achieving more in this lockdown. Our business is through the roof. Like, cause everybody needs security. Everyone got scared including myself in that first um, lockdown. Um, probably getting, my wife's telling me to do the dishes now. So there's there's more to do around the house, <laughs> especially in level three. But I I, um, I think I'm achieving a little bit more uh, being locked down and not crossing all over Auckland and the Zoom and Microsoft Teams. We get to meet with our, staff every week so it's learning as we go but yeah it's awesome. been good oh it's cool so mentally you, you've been kind of quite cool kind of like this lockdown hasn't been really like hard in terms of like um finances or anything like that or just family matters or so you so you've been pretty good um mentally as well um luke pete if i, if I say it's been financially bad would you um give me 50 bucks if i um <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it's um. I think it's I think it's been okay, and I feel for you know I feel for the hospitality industry. Yeah. I feel for our um, shopkeepers that are still paying rent. I feel for uh, the teachers. I'm just sorry, just educating online. We never thought it would turn to that, but um, yeah. overall, it's um. My mental state's pretty good. I, hope, I like to think it's pretty good in this space. That's cool, man. That's good to hear. That's good to hear, um, Luke. Because I think a lot of times we ask the question, and some some of the guys, some of the brothers, are doing doing it quite hard, um, Luke. And it's cool to hear this. Yes. Hear that you're 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 mentally you're you're upbeat and you're 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 still quite sharp and and things are going good. So that's good to hear. Also, cool. And so, Luke, if you see me looking down all the time, it's not because I'm not listening. Or being rude, I'm just just jotting down what, what what you're sharing tonight. So no, so just in, just in case you go, oh, this guy's not even listening. But yeah, awesome. Plus, um, ever since Pete got the second vaccination, he's been like going like this. So if... I thought I got my um, wrist, I think... but so hopefully, Pete, um... are you gonna be in the um? Are you gonna film the I Am Legend Part Two? We could all turn into zombies, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. But, and probably that's something we probably need to talk about is that um the vaccination like. We had massive pushback from our, within our own staff. And it was more around our, I didn't really have a choice, I'll be honest, up front and honest. Before I could even make a choice, um, I was already sitting, my wife already had me sitting in the chair and it was, oh, I've got jammed again. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more um, opportunities, like um, our work opportunities. We, a lot of our, even though it wasn't mandated, 
But um, they were the first question they asked, oh, are you vaccinated? Um, can you prove tests and all that? So, and I guess that's right across the board for everybody, you know, that um, this whole vaccination thing is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gentlemen, we were actually blessed. Our organisation was blessed to look after the. Um, we were looking after the New Zealand Defence Force last year in January, February, before we went into level four lockdown, wow. and we didn't even know what was, you know, like because you know a year and a half, nearly two years later, we're still going through this lockdown. But um, I soon, I mean, even if the borders closing and everything, it's just I think it's heartache for everybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Just I feel for. A lot of our uh, men and families out there, um, it is tough times. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how do you how do you support your workers if, um, in terms of like when they feel like when they're struggling with trying to get vaccinated or um, they feel like. Um, they're being forced. How do you help them navigate through these times or their choices? I um just fire I read, them. I read them. <laughs> <laughs> I read them their rights. I read them their rights under the Human Rights Act 1990. I can't force them to um, take medicine or vaccination, but the, I just explained. And even with our security and schools, because um, we're Blessed to be at Oru College and Papakura High. Mm. And to jump into there, you have to have beef, uh, negative tests. So just the hoops you've got to jump through is massive. But supporting our staff, all we can do is just say, this is what we're doing. And now I think we're sitting at about 97% staff oh, all vaccinated. Shit. I did explain to them that I have elderly parents and I have a granddaughter now. So my my why is them. So wow. is this your first granddaughter, um, also? Yes. <laughs> wow, seven weeks. How does it feel to be a granddad? Man, it, it's um I can't explain, but it's um it's a be- it's beautiful and um our oldest son has become an awesome dad, and he's got a beautiful partner, Tay. So we're just blessed. To, um, it's really nice to um, have our granddaughter. That's awesome. It's funny because um, I'm just wondering if you're like this because I see the way my dad is with my kids. Totally different from the way we were brought up. It's like if I ground my kids or go to, like, when I used to when I go to smack them, I'll get in trouble and I'll just go, Oh, I remember when I got the lao papa and the fushi pa'u and you're like different towards the kids. Are you like that, Us? Well, it's still early days. And, but <laughs> she, she's she's a princess of our house Aww. already. So um, whatever she wants. And uh, a good example was Sunday night. Um, I got to place to put her to sleep and I was just showing off to my wife and say, this is how you do it. And she goes, no, 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 no. I've already set it up for you. I was already holding her for an hour before you come in there. Put it to sleep. But um, <laughs> life is good and really blessed. Wow, that's so cool, Luke. That's awesome, Luke. And, uh, yeah, congratulations once again also. But also as well, Luke, um, because I, I, just in case a lot, lot of the viewers or the viewers who may be watching this, they're probably wanting, wanting to know, oh, so what was Luke like? And so if you can tell us a little bit about your formative years, um, Luke, like your, your younger days, Especially growing up in Tokoroa and then moving up to Auckland, what what, what were you like as, as, a, as a young man, or was even even as a teen? Um, I was up for a challenge. If that's a nice way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were um we come from humble background, and um, my mother was born in Tokoroa too. We moved up in the um mid nineties. And man, when we got to school, we went to uh, my brother and I, because we lived on Buckland Road. Our parents' house was in Buckland Road, and we stayed there for 20 odd years. But um, we went to Natap for two days. And then my other cousin, Louis Vitti, goes, Hey, what are you doing going now? Come to Ayo. So then two days later, you know, as children, you don't 
our parents went and got all the uniform, and you know we already started a a, a new term with a school, and then two days later we're at already college. Um, <clears throat> really blessed to be in that space, and my brother and I we always crack up because we were like, man, we've never seen so many Islanders in one in one place because you know in Tukuru we were like at that stage we were like. Island because it was predominantly Maldi Paki. Yeah, really. Um, that that Luke there, he's not here anymore. That Luke there in probably the uh, late nineties and early two thousand. That guy was bulletproof. Like that guy walked through walls. He was he wasn't. And I, to be honest, man, that's probably what made me the success today. <laughs> Is that guy? But I, I can't. I'm not that guy anymore. And uh, yeah, I was just really blessed to be surrounded by good people. Wow. So, so, so what, do you, what do you mean, Luke? Can you describe to us where were you kind of like getting into a lot of scraps or fights or just... You're, I, didn't, you're, I didn't mind. I was up for the challenge. <laughs> you're the reason why people started up security businesses, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, um, was, you know, yeah. No, so, so, well, give, give us a story, um, um, Luke. Well, if you don't mind, give us a bit, tell us a bit of a story of one of your, um, your run-ins or whatever. Well, I was pleased to start. Um, my cousins, actually, my older cousins, bring me into the doors, and man, I was pleased to start. And I was like, it's a whole new world, and we. One of our first gigs was um, we worked out east, but our, probably our main stuff was on K Road, and we, the bar's still open now. It's called Ink Bar. But what we learned in there because out east, man, you see something wrong, man, the hands, everyone was bringing stuff out. So, but um, I think what we did learn in K Road was to be a gentleman, and a lot of I think that's what's missing from our. Our delivery as doorman at the moment because I don't class myself. I've never classed myself as a bouncer. Mm. Um, I've always classed myself as a doorman because I want to be a host. And you have to be passionate about what you do. If you look after people, people always the respect will always come back. Mm. I'm really blessed to um, be in this industry, and you know I've never touched a floor in 20 odd years. And I'll touch wood. I, I don't touch the floor, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think it's just it's. Um, I think that comes down to customer service. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people miss. Wow. Oh, wow. But we had some really good old days in the, the early 2000s and the late 90s. <laughs> I think... What's I think... What's, 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 what's that? that? What's we been with you last cell. The last cell. We did last cell. I can't hear you guys at the moment. I can't hear you guys. <laughs> I, I probably didn't explain the story first. So when we first came to Auckland, our dad goes... He went and saw um, Mr. Hurst and said, um, any, he said, any positions for my sons? And then um, Mr. Hurst said to my dad, oh, sorry, we're full. So oh. that's why we ended up not top. Oh. And then, then we, um, but man, we have um, so many um, good men from De La Salle. A lot of our rugby boys and church friends. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, Kalita, even dates uh, De La Salle. Wow. Good kid. Oh man, Mr. Mr. Hurst is regretting that, eh? Regretting Mr. That. Hurst, Mr. Hurst, if you're watching <laughs> this, <laughs> why, why? <laughs> oh, cool. Um, oh, shucks. So, um, what led you into um, this industry? It was my uncles, because those times we didn't need licenses. Oh, cool. So if the hands worked, then you <laughs> my cousins and my and my um it was my cousins and my uncles that my uncle Charles Smith mm. he got me into it. He said, Look, if you can stand up and you know be a gentleman for eight hours, and that just grew from there, gentlemen. I um it was funny, I was in I was in Ellerslie. So I stood at the store in Pakaranga across from the BK. And I always wondered, man, I wonder what those guys are doing over in Ellerslie. And then before you know it, you know, the network grows and then 
it was funny. I didn't sleep overnight because I knew I had an interview. It was our first time selling security. And that was probably 15 years ago. Oh. And the margin, I was, my wife and I were cracking up because it was like, you're only going to make $15 off the guard that worked for a shift. But I, was, I remember I asked Kevin, oh, you got a nice sweet jacket? And I was all dressed up, didn't sleep the night before. But man, when I walked out of that room and she said, yes, uh, we'll take you guys. You know, then I had to learn about business. Wow. Paying GST, paying. <laughs> what an awesome. That's, That's cool. cool. Paying withholding tax. Um, just singing that. I'll learn to pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's um that's 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 so cool um um Luke we, yeah we did want to because I wanted to know like how how did you get into the industry and the the security industry and then just just you just sharing that story just you know you just went out there but it does it takes a lot of guts to even just to put yourself out there and um, especially I love what you said in terms of gentlemen because a lot of our men nowadays and the, and you already alluded to it that a lot of our men nowadays don't know how to be a gentleman anymore. It's all a lot, a lot about bravado, being staunch, being macho. But what, what, are, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts in terms of, um, of, of our men and more so in, in general, a young men from a young man to, to a lot of the mature men? What, what, what do you think that's the, the thing that's, that's missing now, now, nowadays? Yeah, I think it's um, treat people how you'd like to be treated. You know, like if I go somewhere with my wife, I would like, you know, someone to, you know, a host or someone to say, oh, welcome in, you know, this is what's happening. Come over here. I, I do think it's, I'm not sure of a society in general, but um, I'm not sure what um, this generation is. Everyone's different in regards to, um, and I think it's just process, making sure that um, we as an organisation are ticking those boxes of engagement. Because mm -hmm. um, I think, I'll be honest, our business has grown on network. Like I can honestly say, yeah, we had cards like 50, 10 years ago, but cards are, it's more the impression as a doorman, you are the first person people see when they come to the venue and you're the last person. So you want to really leave a good impression for them to come back. Mm -hmm. And I, I think doorman, some doorman get that wrong that, you know, I'm just here to look after the venue. They're not looking, they're not believing in the return customer. I believe in the return customer. Wow. Oh, wow, right. that's cool. That's, I never looked at it like that. Man, so if you're looking for talkers rather than um, people you know how to throw hands, sorry, I, I might need a part-time job. <laughs> not sure if I can afford your, um, your salary. <laughs> 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 oh, that's thank you. So, um, so, yeah, you're quite a, you're really entrepreneurial, um, successful man um were you always like that also or you're just a go-getter i always like opportunity it was funny when my my wife and i we just bought our first house in 2019 and um i remember we, we had to clear a bit of rubbish around our house and i had my um cans bin because i always collect the cans you know I, you see guys going into the um the middle of the desert, the under the ocean to pick up gold, but you know, aluminium still a um, aluminium still a mineral, you know, and you still get chart, you can still get twenty five cents per kg for it. So, <laughs> when we first moved into our house, I was doing a clean up, and then my wife goes, "Um, hun, because my kids used to go, oh, dad, look at that's picking rubbish, the cans out of the bins." Because remember, I still worked in the bars, so I still took all the cans from the bars too. Wow, wow, but um. My wife goes, oh, honey, I think you've, um, I think you've graduated, and uh, you can chuck your camping in the rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That was two years ago. That's quite. St that keeps um, quite a humble um, illustration, bro. So that's cool. I remember when we all used to have to collect cans, but man, we used to get more back then, eh? Now it's like <laughs> solely you collect heaps of cans and get nothing for it. <laughs> I think um, I think growing up too, gentlemen, our parents also taught us uh, work ethic. If anything, yeah. Cal, I spoke to you about my hero, my dad. My dad's still working now. Like, we can't pull him away from 
he just got in from work when I he does radiators, but it's um he, they've always uh, talked about and showed us what hard work looks like. Uh, my mother is a ECE teacher at our um, our preschool, and it's also run by my father-in-law. That's and my mother-in-law. That's been part of it for thirty years. So we have awesome pillars around us that teach us hard work. So cool. I, I do remember um, a funny story because even when you talk about work, I was um, I used to wash dishes in the late nineties. I used to when I was already college. I used to wash dishes at Denny's, wow. and man, and I um, I still love Jordan's in. And I remember I bought the, um, the Concord in nineteen ninety five. The um, Space Jam Concord. Oh, I must have spent a lot more pay on it, but I, but you know, it's just humble beginnings. That um, I remember that um, our duty manager was a bit older. He was in his maybe late twenties, and he goes to me, "Oh, hey, you know the Jordans dropped today?" Eh? And I was like, "Yeah." Oh, I was like soaking wet, washing bloody dishes in Manukau. He said, "Do you know the Jordans dropped today?" Eh? And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "What?" Oh, so I went and showed him my locker. I showed him my Jordan 11s, like, and that was what's that, twenty something years ago. Oh wow, wow man, that's that's so true. I'm um, Luke. You know, in terms of work ethics, I was talking to another mate last um, on Sunday that's just gone by. He was saying the same thing. He was talking about work ethics, and and, and I've, a lot of our kids, well, a lot of young people nowadays are kind of, you know, sometimes they feel like they're entitled. This is mine. It's my right to get this. This is my stuff now. You get, Mom and Dad should should provide for me and all that kind of stuff. But you're right. You can never go wrong with um with good uh, work ethics. And you are you're a true testament of 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 that. You you by you sharing with Mom and Dad and and also yourself and, and the work that you're doing. And I know I was I was just doing a bit of research on you, Luke. And I, I listened to one of the uh, the interviews. One of the interviews with um with Ma with Brian Brian Sangala. It was it was an awesome interview, bro. And then um, he yes. said, you've been in the the industry for the for the past twenty years, also. So man, twenty years. That's that's a, that's you know in terms of your business, that's longevity, and that's because of your work ethics uh, as to why you're able to sustain your 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 business. And you got um, you see, I think you mentioned you have a hundred or so um, men under you, workers under you. Like man, that's crazy. Um, and I, I admire that. And um, but I also want to ask you this as well, um, Luke, because I know with security and, and, and manning the doors and so forth can be quite dangerous. And there's a, and we're living in some real dangerous times besides COVID and all these gangs and all these guys who fear Kamriyanga, all those guys. And I heard, and I remember um, you, you mentioned something about, on the interview about um, coward punches. And so I want to ask you about that. How was it? Because I, I think they attacked your, your son-in-law, uh, Luke. Can you, can you tell us what, what, what happened? Like, what was the the ordeal of, of yeah, bloody bloody la Sally and they was it? Oh, <laughs> was it was it La Salle? Young guys or <laughs> men? <laughs> that was um my son-in-law. I think I'm not sure what we still don't know what happened to this day. Um, my cousin and I just finished a job in Manukau. And we were still hosting the uh, Tongan team uh, at the Vodafone Event Centre. But we were in the middle of Cavendish and we were like, oh, we haven't heard from those guys at um, Dishies. They must be okay. But little did we know we got to Manukau and then my wife said, oh, um, our son-in-law had been uh, jumped, cowed punched. Um, I drove every red light there from the Vodafone and we caught him getting off the ground. But... I think um, it's not the thing you want to see. Like even if it's my son-in-law, your staff member, or anybody, like it's just um, the, I'm not sure what it is around the pack mentality. Mm. Um, I have um, friends that are like to hang around with colourful people, but um, our dads always taught us to stand on your own two feet. Mm. You don't need people. You don't need to be um, in a pack to make a difference. Wow. Wow. Gentlemen, if I, if I have to share with you, and when I talk to you about my hero, like I, my dad was uh, Mr. New Zealand 87, 
so in Tokoro there weren't many obviously Islanders. But our dad was um he wasn't scared. And I remember um <clears throat> we we're coming through the main street and at at the early nineties, late eighties, there was a lot of burglaries in Tokoro. And dad sort of said it's the gangs that are doing it. And I remember um our dad driving up to a uh, um a car full of patch members and my dad said to them, Hey, if if my house gets burgled, I'm going to kill you guys. And we looked at my, my we looked back and we we're like, these guys are all tattooed up, faces all tattooed, and they they turned around and looked at my dad and said, "Sorry, Mister Melamu, wasn't us." <laughs> but I think Dad's always from that day on. Dad's always like, "Oh, our dad is not scared of anything. He's <laughs> the nicest man you'll meet." But don't meet him in the back, of the alleyway. Wow, it's tough. He's just tough. I think he can still bench more than um, me and my two brothers. You serious? No. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. Just that. Oh, well, wish you could hold that. So, you know. Up. So I could never say to that. Oh, Dad, I'm part of this thing now, eh? Because then he'll say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> no. I've got nothing against like I said I've got nothing against guys that want to hang around with each other and all that but um, uh, yeah that's where I sit uh, that's, that, 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 that's good um, that's a powerful gem right there because mm-hmm. um, everyone wants to ride in packs but no one's willing to sort of stand up from the crowd and I'm just hearing that story that's cool man we need some of that old school um, mentality. Um, what well, for your um, ventures? What, what's your um, proudest success? Probably in this day and age, was um, purchasing a, our first uh, family house mm. with my wife. I mean, like I said, I told you I've Wash dishes, I've picked up cans. <laughs> but just something to house my family. I'm proud of that, you know, and there's nothing there's nothing better than mowing your own lawn, trim, trimming your own trees. It's a great part. Team with our staff, I encourage them into um well, our, we have our leadership meeting every Wednesday, every Wednesday at 12 o'clock. And I'm always pushing for our because it's generational wealth, because it's not for me. You know, it's when when I die, my grand my granddaughter Zara has got property. Mm. So it's and they never have to worry about a roof over the head. So I'm really driving that with our staff. I, I encourage them to save and we have man our success or the success of Milano security is not on me it's alone you know my oldest son T is man he's just growing up a lot and he's leading leading from the front he had his first fight this year Whoa. Um, and he's we're singing in the boys we <clears throat> my wife's been all involved we have an awesome operations team of my cousin Abe I've have to share with you we went to, when we started getting too big. I went I went down to um, Tukuru and picked up my first cousin Abe twelve years ago, and he's still here. <laughs> and it was because um, his dad is my mum's brother. I rang him from I was standing at a door in Beachlands. I said, "Oh, what's Abe up to?" So I was out at a party, and I told my other cousin, "I said, All right, when we finish here, we're just going to drive down and get him." So he just got home. I think he we got there at five o'clock in the morning. And he jumped in the car. We said, get in the car. He was still half drunk. But I think he started to... He, by, the, by the time he was over his hunger, I was still hungover. By the time he realized he was already in Cambridge and he'd passed Hamilton. So, But again, people say, don't mix business with family. Mm. Man, your families... We have a lot of our family that work together. We just keep work and family separate. Wow. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, what... <clears throat> What drives that was in terms of like looking out for your family and making sure there's opportunities for everyone to succeed? 
Sorry, can you repeat that? What drives um, what drives the passion for you to really provide these opportunities for for family members, even though they might um, not uh, they might sort of um, bring a bad name to your organization, or you know that whole idea of mixing um, family with business. Like, what drives right. that you wanting to? Um, um, see your family succeed? Um, Charles, good question. I believe that everyone has to eat on the same table. You know, that's my philosophy. That's my drive. I just want everyone, I want everyone to win. You know, there's, there's guys out there that, yeah, um, giving opportunity, but it's about everybody. I can, um, hand on heart. I, because security is a um, cutthroat industry. But I, I always make sure that I uh, am loyal to our staff. So you pay them on time, pay them. Because, again, if I have to share a story with you, that's probably helped us where we are now. When my dad worked for um, Kinleaf, so he worked in a, in a paper mill for 20 odd years. And when we moved to Auckland, it was something different. So he, he, got, he got into it, he was doing odd jobs. And then it was times when we had to go with our dad to go and pick up his pay, you know, and we're chasing, we were like driving all over Auckland, you know, in the middle of the night trying to um, find dad's boss um, to um, get his pay. Mm -hmm. So for my wife and I, our thing is, you know, pay our staff on time, you know, like, cause we never, I know what it's like to sit in the back seat and be driving around. Oh, and I never want our families to go without. Wow. I do encourage our staff to, you know, save, you know, Again, I want our, we got a guy that's with us. Now there's mortgage free. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow, bro. Wow. That's cool. Um, you know, and English is a second language, but, you know, I always tell the staff, man, look at this guy. You know, um, he's done this through hard work. So he worked a full time job in paint for like 20 odd years, but he's come full time over the last four years. But, um, Wow. Yeah, again, these those are uh, different guys that motivate you to be better. Wow. wow. I love that, man. It's, it's not only not, not only are you providing um opportunities for work, but you're also helping these guys um succeed in life. So we wish we had more Luke's out there. Yeah. Oh. Sure, is... <laughs> Good Luke. Hey, hey Luke, you know, because it was business something that you always envisioned, um, Luke. Okay, what was the, def the the defining moment for you to say, you know what, I'm just going to do, my, I'm going to start my own business. When, when was it that, that moment you feel like, nah, this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to um, do for, for a very long time? When, when was that defining mo moment for you? Um, I've been really blessed with some good opportunities, to be honest, team. Like, I did um, practice social work in my old school from... 2007 to 2014 and I worked with um, a great bunch of people um, <clears throat> but it was probably the when it was time to jump it was probably the the jump in full time would be 2014 I just said to myself it's an opportunity again <laughs> you know um, uh I knew that people still had bills to pay. It was a massive thing to do. I can honestly say, man, Army Security, we haven't learned anything because that's not what my dad taught me. He said, save, save and um, pay everything up front. Don't um, go, don't loan to start a business. Don't, so when, I swear to save to get to that, to that point. I think there's nothing better and I, I don't, I'm not um, criticizing the um, people that work, but there's nothing better than working for yourself because mm. only you can dictate the space. Only you can say, if you don't get up, you, you, don't, you, you don't get paid or I don't get paid, sorry. Mm. And only, yeah, but it's, um, it's an awesome space to be in and I just encourage our people, man. Well, 2018, we went to Samoa and we're blessed to take our, half our children over with us. And uh, we hear stories about our dad's mother. 
So, you know, hard work to still in the, in the blood. So she had a chicken farm from in Lutanu, and she used to sell the eggs to all the hotels. So, you know, picking up the and all that was, you know, <laughs> down the track of what our grandmother was doing. Wow. So, wow, wow. So it was, so it was already in the bloody arm, Luke. The, the entrepreneur in business and work ethic, bro. It's too good, man. Uh, also, with your, um, thanks for sharing your successes and and um, just the way you really help our, our community to thrive. Um, it's easy to for people on the outside looking in and say, oh, man, he's got it all together, um, comes from a strong family. But has there ever been a time where, um, where it wasn't like that, where it was like um, you're able to share with us like some of your darkest moments or if there was a time where you really struggled? Yeah, I, I'll be honest, team. I was probably, I, I share with you, yeah, I have shared the successes, but, you know, from this part of my life, um, I, um, what do you call it? I, I lost Christina in 2009. And she she actually died in my arms. Um, I because I'm a stubborn man, it took me a very very long time. So I think we're at year twelve now, but I I was at the cemetery every day, and I think I think along that journey I um I was just in a space where I didn't care like. And no one's going to get in my way. <laughs> I was blessed to be surrounded by good people. I was probably, I'll be honest, upfront honest, I was probably on the verge of going inside. Wow. <laughs> That's how much I didn't care. Wow. wow. I, I, I had to remember the other children mm. and put them first. And that, and like I said, I'm stubborn, so it didn't. It took me a long time to accept it. So I think probably on the tenth anniversary, I stopped going every day. And I, I sort of, because um, it was it was holding me back. Like I didn't want to, I didn't want to go overseas. I didn't. I was struggling to go places because I wanted to go be at peace where she was. But um, mm. I know she's with me, and we're blessed to have a trust in her name. And we've done some amazing stuff, and we're still doing some work in the, the high schools where my passion is with the youth. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's probably my darkest, my darkest time. And I, I'll be honest, it's there's no script to life. And um, again, uh, to be surrounded by my wife and all my family and close friends, they seen the dark, the dark side of. Um, but yeah, I, I can honestly say now I see Christina through my other children. And I know that um, I've accepted that, yes, it was God's quarter up and she has a bigger job in heaven. Wow. That's, but that's probably the. Wow. Wow. Also, just want to thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I know it's, um, yeah, it's. I don't. I can't imagine what it's like, and uh, for you just to share that, and um, it will it will be a blessing to others who are listening in, who are facing um, similar um, trauma, and um, just yeah, thank you so much, also just for sharing that with us. Um, yeah. There was a there was a quote because you know um, there's family members or friends that when they go through something you really want to be there for them you want to be a support person but it's um when you're the person that's going through it oftentimes you just don't want anyone any support um and so there's this quote where um because i'll be trying to support someone there's this quote that says um you you can't move on from trauma but you can move forward with trauma um it's 
Yeah. How is that a true scene, or does that resonate with you? Well, it's funny. It's funny you say that, um, Pete. When you approached me to uh, to be on this, I thought, man, I might go listen to some podcasts. And it's funny you say that, Charles, because I listen to people that I've you know look up to, and I I'm not sure if you heard Denzel Washington's. Um, he talks about falling forward, you know, and the, man, that makes so much sense. Because, you know, when you talk about, you know, what are you going to do after rugby? You, what are you going to fall back on? But it's, when he talks, Charles, just, you're so right. You have to fall forward because it's, um, you want to see what you're going to fall into. You don't want to, you want to, uh, you know, fall back and not see if anyone's going to catch you or not. Wow. 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 That's good. That's so cool. Um, do you have a, sorry, also, while we're still, in this conversation because you know there's probably others out there you know some men when we carry stuff we we bottle it up inside and and it's really hard to um, share amongst men um, is there do you have any encouragement for um, someone that may be going through a dark um, a dark time um, like yourself at yeah do you have uh, any encouragement for them also Charles, and um, even when we're not prescribing, but even when we're talking to them, we can't talk about our our trauma. Right? Like we can only like relate, but we can't say, oh, because you know, losing your dad or losing your mom compared to losing your daughter or losing your uncle, we can't. The measures are different, eh? But yeah. my my thing would be, um, you have to be there for them and just say, just tell them that. You know, in your darkest space, please. I'm on a phone. I'm a phone call away, because you're right. I I did lock a lot of things up. I locked up heaps. Mm. You know, I couldn't talk, and you know, I was getting drunk in town, and you know, just doing things that wasn't me. Wow. But um, again, blessed to be, and I think even being able to coach rugby and see, because I coached all through that, and my, mm. I'll be honest, our players didn't see it. You know, I, I'm not sure if they seen it or not, but I still work doors and come and coach. <laughs> but that's the same again. It's, um, to answer your question, Charles, we can't relate, but we can only support um, wow. our friends in dark spaces. Well, very wise. Very wise. I love Luke, that. Luke, very wise, Luke. I think a lot of us sometimes we feel like we try to we have to say something. We'll try to encourage them, um, Luke, mm. and then we try to, and then we try to share our, share our own stories. And it's probably the you know the guy or whoever's going through those those hard times or those struggles are not they're not wanting to hear that. They just want someone to just to be there. Hey, um, Luke, just yes. Wow, well, that's that's real wise also. But um, rest in love with, um, with your daughter Christina and, and thank bro, you. Um, you know, and, and I, I mean this in the utmost respect also. Your daughter would would be very proud of you as you know, as her dad and the things that you you you're doing right now, and and her siblings and so also uh, mad props to you also, mad props for that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a circle. Like I'm just blessed of my wife. I'm blessed that of my parents, both my parents, my in laws that are awesome people that have just supported us the whole way. Mm. Our siblings, I um really close with all my siblings. Um, we have a real tight-knit family. Um, and I think my praise and my why I'm here today is because of my my surrounding, my circle. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, cause how, how, yeah, how, is, how important is that, um, Luke? It's like, I know it's very important for, for us to be... I think in your... Yeah, in your darkest time. And for men, we don't go, oh, come over to someone's house. I'm having a bad day. You know, as men, mm-hmm. you just sit in your, you, you go into that dark space and you stay quiet. Yeah. But I think it's, if I look back now, I could have, <clears throat> when I could have reached out a little bit more. Yeah. I had, um, yeah, I had some cousins that I really depended on. <laughs> um, my cousin Abraham. My cousin, um, Abraham Maloye and John Paul Ewini. Wow. Uh, and my, they would always come over and comfort. You know, comfort was always, oh, come on. There's a box of beers here. Come on. We're going to put you to sleep after. <laughs> come on. 
the school. And just the fact that they were prison nails um, sitting yes. in the mud with yes. you. Yes. Your cousins are the best when it comes to um, um, keeping, you know, um, keeping you cheerful and having fun times. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> that's awesome. So cool. So th- that's been a, wow, that's an amazing journey. And um, you now have a beautiful, oh, uh, a beautiful children and you got a grandchild and got sounds like you got about you're going for eight houses or seven houses one each hey eh? <laughs> if we can put them all on the property yeah nice what what um what are some um, words of advice for for a pacifica men or just men in general in terms of um setting goals and trying to accomplish some of the things that are in their hearts? For me, goals, you have to record it. You have to uh, write it down. You have to, um, I, I'm that person. So if I want to do something, I always work back from it. I work backwards from it. So what are the steps to getting that? So if it's that, so I want to buy that bike, Okay, that's a cool bike. It's going to cost me this. I have to work backwards from it. Because if it's not, um, well, Denzel says it again. He talks about uh, it's not a goal. It's, if it's not completed, it's only a dream. Mm. You know, people say dream big, but it's people dream about having stuff. But if you don't, I always say, it's legitimate luck. I want, I, I've always just worked towards it and we are left. that's sicky so you must have goals for all the Jordans you want eh <laughs> <laughs> oh, probably not as big as Danny's um, collection but yeah oh, oh Danny eh well, how, how many Jordans have you got now um, Luke <clears throat> Is this going to go public? Because then my wife's going to say, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I think I've probably got about... You got 100? Oh. Wow. The next question is, um, what's your address? And was, <laughs> was the closest on front door to the road? <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool. Oh, man. Oh yeah, maybe about that. Or I only oh blessed, you know the passion thing. I I only wear as of, I made a thing to myself as of a few years ago. I'm only wearing Jordans. That's it. Wow. Then that docu that bloody documentary didn't do us any favors because <laughs> the Jordans <laughs> Jordans were <really> more expensive. <laughs> so, oh, oh, yeah, so at Malama Security, um, I think we're probably the only ones. I'm not sure if there's any other. Our dress code is uh, work polo, work jacket, black pants, any Jordans, or black shoes. Oh. So our staff, our staff do wear all their J's to work, and it's pretty cool. Yeah. But I always remind them, where else in the world can you wear your Jordans to work? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wow. oh. Did you see the um the whole debacle on um the MP um Dawiri Waititi when he wore his Jordans in Parliament? No. Oh, he wore his Jordans in Parliament and they um the speaker of the house was judging him. He said, Oh, only uh, people that do bad things wear those things, and then every everyone came with this backlash and then started posting up um, all these famous people and all these successful people wearing Jordans. So it's, it's cool that um, you shared that because, yeah, it was funny. My whole family is jaded out now. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, man. So, if any of your brothers are looking for work uh, and you want to wear your jays. <laughs> Look up uh, Melamu security, <laughs> but but it's 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 a uh, it's the, it's a phenomenon, um, um Luke, because we like the last guy we had, um, uh, you would know David Solomon, uh, yes. yeah. So he's he's had our Jordans as well. He's 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 collecting his Jordans. I didn't realize Danny goes into his Jordans 
Yeah, yeah. Jack, I think I'm sure Danny's got a bloody um I'm sure he's got a whole house full. What's his address? Also? <laughs> <laughs> and the code and the code is <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's the password? <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Because um, uh, we're quite um, I'm conscious of your time also and um, just have a couple quick, just two more questions left because um, you're a busy man and I, I, I see you go like that. <laughs> so, that's a second tip. <laughs> that's a second tip. Um, how have you been able to adapt through all this change like from um I guess from your deepest, from your darkest moments to these moments of success, um, or just with COVID as well, because there's been a lot of people have have um, been forced to change things. How have you been able to cope with that? Tim, the answer to that, Charles and Pete, is that um, find a good lady, Ooh. find a good partner. Because uh, find a partner that's going to make you the best version of you. Wow. You know, I'll be honest, my wife lets me paint. Oh, not paint like Pete, but you know, paint. My wife allows me to paint, just open canvas all the time and always follows my goals and aspirations. Wow. So you, you need to find that person. So I mean, out there, whoever's listening, because that's a person that's my wife's put up with everything, you know, the, the highs, the lows, you know, and um, Charles, that's probably my advice. Just that's cool. Find that person. That's yeah. cool. And uh, also, if you could, oh, wait, sorry, before I, Pete, did you? No, 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 no you go. That... Well, because we didn't. In the beginning, I was thinking, oh, what, what, what kind of other, what other questions could we ask, ask you? And I know you, you had a you had a uh, you had a uh, industrious illustrious um, rugby career as well, mm. um, brother. But we thought, you know what, we'll, we'll focus on, on on your on your entrepreneur and your business um, acumens. And so, bro, yeah, uh, just you, you go, Charles. You go, you go ahead. So I just remembered from the rapid question, we we're going to come back to it more. And it was, I, I know um, we moved on real quickly and you're hoping I would have bring it up again, but I've seen you, um, I've seen you embody the word vulnerability. Um, do we, did you want to sort of have this chance to talk about um, what does that look like and should I be, should our men be more vulnerable? What do you mean? Uh, I saw... That vulnerable question. What do you mean by that, Charles? What, um, what does it mean to you, or mean to, for a man to be vulnerable? Is it is it positive? Or is it negative? I'm only a positive person, Charles. Charles, <laughs> I don't, and my strive to success, and my strive to um, be the better version of me. I don't look sideways. So I don't care what people say. Mm. I don't care if that guy's circus and if, probably vulnerability is not in my vocabulary. If, and I'm not being hot-headed or any... Yeah. I'm, not, I'm being upfront and honest. Mm. I, that's probably why I couldn't answer it to you. <laughs> cool. And, and it also might be just the way we look at the term because um, even though... It's probably hard to um, define it. Um, you um, you sort of embodied it in the way you are able to share some of um, your successes and also your dark moments. And for a lot of people, um, vulnerability. The way we have viewed vo- vulnerability for a long time is that oh, you're a you're a sissy if you um, sort of. Um, share or it's almost like it's connected to crime but um, in our conversations we've sort of talked about how vulnerability is strength where we um, share um, our narratives our successes and also the things in our hearts that help other men um, succeed and and you've embodied that also Mm. and so yeah I just want to thank you Oh, Charles you know um, life is uh, um like Forrest Gump said, life is a, a, 
box of chocolates. <laughs> I'll be honest. I've been, I'm really blessed. I mean, um, you talk about rugby, man. I've travelled all around the world and I've seen poverty. So, you know, when the guy over there is begging me, begging to ask for a dollar or something, I always think, you know, because I've just explained to you the last hour my work, mm. what my work ethic is. I'll, if I want something, I'll go and get it. <laughs> I don't have to. Dad's taught us not to steal it. Go work hard for it. Mm. Um, I do remember, uh, was that the World Cup 2001 sevens? And I couldn't sleep. And it was held in Argentina. And I was in Buenos Aires. So I went for a walk. Mm. When I went for my walk, I seen uh, um, a family. So at the time, they would just chuck all their rubbish into the middle of the, the mall. And she was picking up the pork bones. That Man, they smell off. You know, they must have been like three days old. But, you know, now I, I bring that to... Uh, that I've seen that, I've seen poverty, I've been blessed to see all that sort of thing. It's, um, it only makes someone stronger, you know, and to pass pass the message on, or pass the, um, but it's just, yeah, I just want to share that with you guys, that when you, you see different things, not only from here, you see them from around the world. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And, and one of, the things that's really stood out for me um, with your talano also is just the um, the value of the the values that your dad had um, sort of passed down um, for you and your siblings, and that work ethic and just um, um, embodying strength and and standing up um, and standing out from the crowd and and it just really I think that's a um, massive encouragement for our other men that we be men that leave a legacy for the next generations to come and you're doing that also and, and you're also impacting other um, other individuals with their generational um, wealth and all that so um, yeah I just want to honour you um, right now and just thank you for being a pillar in our community and uh, we need more brothers out there that take a um, stand for this generation and our people as well. Yeah. So true. So thank you both yeah. Charles and Pete for having me on board today. I mean, uh, I wish it was actually a Friday night cause it would probably go for about another four hours. <laughs> um, could talk to you guys for, you really made me, I think this is probably my first podcast. That's my first, first podcast. Oh. So I'm very grateful to have my food. Uh, won't be your last also because um, once we go back down to um, alert levels two or one, we'll love to have you in the studio and um, have you live also and probably play some cards or have some coffee, that black coffee, and we will chop it up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Luke. This, this won't be the last time, Luke. We would love for you. Hopefully, when the, like like Charles was saying, hopefully when the alert levels go down, we can have you come to the studio and and have a, a live um telenor. That'd be awesome. That you get to meet the other brothers as well. Um, but but is is there anything? Just one one last question. Uh, uh, is there anything you want to impart? Anything inspirational, or a word, or a phrase, or a sentence you want to impart to um our our men? Any any words of wisdom, um, Luke? You know, people always say sky's the limit. You know, but I just want our men to know that they there's the atmosphere as well. You know, people are only aiming for the sky, but, you know, past the sky is the atmosphere. So I just want to pass that on. And I'll, it's, I've, it's always been in my head, you know, that this, yeah, you're looking at the sky. Oh, I've got a beautiful sky outside my office now, but there's always the atmosphere. And if you, you know, anyone that wants to drive to be better, you know what I mean by aim for the atmosphere. Wow, and I love that. Oh man, that's awesome! Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. Hey, um, you got any other questions you want to ask, um, Charles? No, no, I just really wanted to, um, again honor Luke and the work that he does, and just for um, being on our space and really um, being able to share your story for other men. And yeah, I just want to really, um, pray a blessing over you and, and your family and just continue to do the amazing work. And I'm 
looking forward to what's next, bro. Looking forward to see what's next for you. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, likewise, Luke. Thank you so much. Also, I've been really encouraged. Really encouraged for, um, from uh, Talanoa tonight. Also, I love the story. Um, I love your story in terms of your, your business, but more so your love for your family, for, for your Ainga, and, that, um, and for you to go back to Tokoroa uh, and, and picking up your cousin and just there's a whole, uh, and the fact that you said that um, everyone eats at the same table. And it's, it's a true testament of who you are as, as a man, but more so as, as a businessman, as a father, and, and as a husband. So also, thank you so much for tonight. Really encouraged. But as usual, also, we always have a gift for our speakers, everyone that comes on and, and shares their journey or experiences or, and, and, their, and their wisdom. Uh, also, we, I just did a bit, of a bit of a sketch, a caricature of you. Um, and so that, that's why I'm looking down all the time and just writing down what, uh, what you've shared and just recapping um, what you've talked about and did a bit of a, a caricature. And this of you also, I know Melabu Securities, you have the, you have the, the helmet, the, the Roman soldier. And I thought of you as, as, as a soldier, as a, as a lieutenant or as a captain. And so, also there's you. Thank you. Your, 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 wow. Your shield and your spear. Wow. Your armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one of the, yeah, for your beard. And so, yeah, these are all the words you've, you've shared tonight. So, also, the, when the alert levels go down, also, Charles and I will, will, will be more Thank than happy you to come so, up. so much. We'll be more than happy to come up and drop it off to you. So, so yeah, this is for you, also. Thank you so much for tonight. Also. I'd love to have you guys both come over. Oh, you feel part of the family already. We've already been talking. This over an hour. <laughs> um, look, no. I've, I've heard, I've only heard good things about uh, Mad Messenger, and I, and even this men's forum. I just encourage you both to um, keep up the awesome work you're doing. It's not easy, and you know, like um, what you're doing is sharing experiences and motivating our men and our, especially our Pacifica, to higher honors. Because, like I said, we all got to eat on that. The same table. Yeah. But on that team, refine, unlock, and take charge. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, Luke, so Luke, one more thing. Is, is there one guy, is, is there a person that you can think of that would be ideal for the show that you, that you think that men would, would be um, be beneficial to hear from? Who, 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 would be the, who would be that person that you could call out? I've got a few. There's, there's Kevin, my, you know, my best mate, man. And again, you see... All I talked about is our dad. You know, our dad's drive through 132 caps. You know, that's they go to work every day. You know, um, there's also Singy. Yep. Singy's um, you you get the raw um, version of him. And I think there's a uh, um, there's Coach Hopper that trains with um, one of Kevin's trainers. Wow. He's um, doing some great things in our community. Me, yeah. awesome, awesome man, also. Um, and we look forward to um, our next one, part two, um, Luke, part two in the studios. That'd be awesome to have you um, um, live as well. We can have a live stream. But uh, thank you so much for tonight. We really appreciate it also for attending. Love also, um, little team. Uh, so bless you and, um, and go well also, um, especially at the end of the year. So bless you so much also. Thank you so much. Our team, I look forward to um, catching up again, refine, unlock, and take charge. Yeah. Mandate.